Matt Zollers is your first commitment of 2025 for Missouri. And I believe this young quarterback could be the start of the best class in Missouri history. So let's talk about it all right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso, and obviously a guy who snuck in nine holes before the Matt Zollers announcement. You know what? Coming up on the program, I want to talk a little hoops, too, why I'm hoping that Ron Summers and Peyton Marshall are a match made in heaven. But of course, just tons of football to get to at the top of the show. First, I do want to tell you today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers, join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And happy to report that I've got a lot of happy news to start today's program with. Matt Zollers announced just about an hour ago that he has committed to the Missouri Tigers, a guy who just finished up his junior season of football this past fall in Royers Ford, Pennsylvania. Six foot three, 205 pounds, although he's a, a pro style quarterback. According to Rivals.com, I would challenge that particular designation quite a bit. In fact, as I've talked with Brian Smith at least once, I think the whole pro style versus scrambler designation, whatever you want to call it, I, I just think that's sort of a distinction without much of a meaning at this point. But speaking of rivals, when you look at their rankings, well, he's the 24th ranked player at the position nationally and a four star, which sounds really good on paper. But if you dig even deeper, look at some other rankings. And in fact, I think rivals actually maybe trails a lot of these other sites these days. If you, if you listen to the industry, but if you look at on three.com, a more new entrant to this space, well, they actually have Zollers as number three in the entire country at the quarterback position, 24, seven sports has him sixth at quarterback in ESPN 10th. So actually the consensus way higher than I even set up there with rivals.com. So to me, by the way, on three, not only the third best quarterback in the entire country, the 17th best player in the entire country. So obviously this is a massive, massive win for Eli Drinkwitz and Kirby Moore, who I believe was his lead recruiter here, Missouri's offensive coordinator. And of course, this is at the most important position on the field and in a position of need as well. Plus, generally speaking, you're only going to take one quarterback in each class. You start off with your quarterback. That allows you to put all of your eggs in a bunch of different baskets. Use your resources for other positions. So this is a big deal for Missouri on multiple different levels. And as I said before, you're talking about a real position of need in the future for Missouri. Beyond Drew Pine, the recent transfer from Arizona State, he's the only one on the roster who is proven, if you will. The only guy who has any significant experience really any modicum of experience really at this level of football of course Sam Horn is taking a few snaps here and there but we have no idea what we really have in him at this point despite his immense talents and speaking of immense talent obviously Matt Zollers has that Georgia was the primary competition for Zollers with Alabama making a late charge. Honestly, what more do you need to know there other than, of course, an impressive pull to get this young man away from Penn State, too. More often than not, those type of kids from Pennsylvania, if Penn State comes at you hard, well, they're going to get him. And it just seems like, once again, not only is Missouri's name, image, and likeness infrastructure rather strong, but as I pointed out, Missouri under Eli Drinkwitz, the 2021 class, well, 
it's best ever in at least the Rivals.com era. I really think with Zollers starting off this class, with Missouri's name, image, and likeness infrastructure, with Eli Drinkwitz, I think if Missouri, especially you continue into this fall winning ball games, I think this really has a chance to be rated at least as Missouri's best high school class ever coming out of signing day. Now, I mentioned Alabama making a bit of a late charge for Zoller's recruitment. Really, his entire junior season as a quarterback was kind of a late charge for him, just in terms of shooting up the rankings nationally at quarterback. Part of that is because he's a multi-sport athlete that doesn't necessarily go to every all the high-profile seven-on-seven camps, quarterback camps, that type of deal. But obviously, it doesn't take long nationally, especially by your junior year, despite the fact that Zollers, this was his third year as a starting quarterback, felt like this was a big-time breakout year for him where he threw for a school record 2,900 yards and 37 touchdowns, leading his team to a 9-3 and record in class in the Class 6A fi- quarterfinals there in Pennsylvania. Now, he spoke to the Philadelphia Inquirer in the last few months or so. He was talking about his game. He said, it all starts with toughness. If I'm being tough, it wears off on everyone else, and they start being tough too. It carries over to everything I do from the football field to the basketball court, everything. And on Missouri, he said, I just feel like I connected best with them even before I visited there. When they came and visited the school, there was an instant connection. And Zoller said that he did make his final decision just this morning. So while Missouri felt good about this position, Georgia felt good about its position too, obviously. It was a tough decision for that young man. And, well, from Missouri's perspective, again, getting a kid away out of the state of Pennsylvania from Penn State, getting away from from Georgia, the two-time defending national champions before this season, could easily argue they should have made the playoffs again this year. Alabama, what more do you need to say? But from my perspective, when I watch Zollers play, here's what I see. I see a kid who's a massively high upside prospect. I think he's the biggest upside prospect Missouri has had at quarterback since at least Sam Horn. Now, there have been other four-star guys who have come through the program. I really think Zollers is at a different level, just with his combination of size and just pure athletic ability. Like you say, he's, like I've said, like he said, he's a multi-sport athlete. And what you see on film is he's a good runner and not just a, a straight line runner either. He's athletic. You know, sort of like Patrick Mahomes is not necessarily the fastest straight line runner in the world on on at the 40-yard dash, but you get him in, a, in pads and around other people, he's got a certain sense of athleticism, one of the best scramblers out there. A little bit of that in Zollers just in terms of that type of athleticism. Just so we're clear here, not saying he's Patrick Mahomes, folks. I'm just making a comparison to his scrambling ability. And by the way, really big arm strength. Even without his feet set, he's able to throw the ball with really impressive velocity, just not something that you can teach whatsoever. And when he actually sets his feet, he's throwing ropes down the field 50 yards plus in the air. So again, This is a kid with a tremendous, tremendously high upside. Like I've said, he isn't necessarily had been hitting. He had all of these camps and that type of thing. In other words, maybe when he actually sits down and concentrates on football 24-7, looking at film, studying, all that stuff, I think he's got a chance for it all to click and him to be an even higher upside prospect than a lot of people are assuming at this point. I think that's what Alabama started to figure out towards the end of this process as well. So once again, you couldn't have started off the 2025 class better than nabbing Matt Zollers, who again, according to on3.com, third best quarterback in the class, top 30 player at any position nationally. And when it comes to the Missouri Athletic Department, obviously Eli Drinkwitz and his program are are filling myself, and I'd like to thank you as well with a lot of confidence. But as far as the rest of the administration, the rest 
of the athletic department, even the people behind the scenes at MU, I'm a little bit less confident, I got to say. But Moon Choi did decide to actually speak to us about the athletic director search. Let's talk about what he had to say coming up here in just a little bit. But first, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. The sports calendar is truly loaded this time of year, and FanDuel is making it even more exciting to get in on the action because right now new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks you can use to bet on the tourney, MLB, NBA, NHL, and so much more, including, I believe, WrestleMania you can bet on this weekend, believe it or not. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win. It's FanDuel, America's number one sports book. During the day, do you have ESPN or Fox Sports on your TV mindlessly? Do you have to turn down the volume to actually hear yourself think over those people? Well, I would strongly suggest you switch to the Locked On Sports Today feed, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the best stories in sports without all the noise locked on sports today brings you can't miss analysis opinions and news streaming 24 7 on youtube or the free amazon fire tv channels app part of the locked on podcast network your team every day and Moon Choi, hey, Missouri's president, hey, he'll actually get out and say some words occasionally, unlike the board of curators, though I'm not sure what we're supposed to take from this. Moon Choi, talking with the Columbia Missourian here, said, I'm confident that we're going to hire an outstanding athletic director. It may two weeks, sorry, excuse me, it may take two weeks, it may take a month, but the key point is we are not settling. We're going to hire an outstanding person. We're going to hire an AD that wants to stay in Missouri and really help elevate our program to even greater heights. So maybe a slight shot at Desiree Reed Francois there at the end, somebody who wants to stay in Missouri. I'll be honest, I, I get the feeling that Desiree Reed Francois wanted to stay in Missouri. That was all the indications we had up until her surprising departure in February. So I found that a little bit interesting. And this whole thing of, hey, we're taking our time. We're going to hire an outstanding person. That's all well and good on paper. The problem is, again, Choi, the, the board of curators at this point, I don't know that they have a lot of the benefit of the doubt here. So I guess as people like to point out, as long as Missouri football as long as that's going well, everything's okay, but I don't know. If I'm if I'm Dennis Gates, if I'm anybody else in the athletic department right now, I'd sure would like to have some idea of who my boss is because while Eli Drinkwitz may ultimately be the person with the most power in the university and the whole athletic department, that isn't necessarily the case for the rest of these people. So that's why ultimately Missouri didn't hire a women's basketball coach, and honestly, I – I don't really know what to say about the athletic director search at this point. Again, if Missouri had had reason to for me to give them the benefit of the doubt, I would. But right now, I got to say, I'm a little bit nervous. The fact that it's taken this long tells me that their first choice probably was not lined up perfectly. They probably didn't get their first, maybe even their second choice at this point. And one more quick note here on Matt Zollers that I just read as I hit pause on my my mixer here. This is from Gabe DeArmond at Power Mizzou on if Matt Zollers plans to enroll early for next spring football or not in 2025. Quote from Gabe, he's a good basketball player, so he will have to decide if he wants to skip his senior year of hoops, but I'm told the plan now is to get on campus as soon as possible and compete for the starting quarterback job with Brady Cook done after this year. So obviously, hey, if you're a Missouri fan, you'd love to see that happen. At the same time, I'd totally understand if he would want to play out his senior season of high school basketball as well. You, you don't want to count on a true freshman to start in 2025. You've got to think Drew Pine or Sam Horn would be the leader in the clubhouse at this moment. But 
You do love hearing that just from a competitiveness standpoint from Zoller's perspective. And speaking of a power Mizzou, I think Drew King over there does a really nice job of covering the men's basketball side. And a quote from Drew earlier today, or maybe in the last day or so, he says, on Ron Summers, Dennis Gates' new assistant coach, a guy who's been called an offensive coordinator and a post-player specialist, Drew says, quote, that seems especially relevant for the likes of potential returnees like Aiden Shaw, Jordan Butler, and Trent Pierce, but also incoming freshman Trent Burns and Peyton Marshall and any other front court transfers the Tigers bring in. And th that's certainly a really good point and almost an obvious one by Drew, but it wasn't something I had totally thought of yet, especially when it comes to Peyton Marshall in particular, in my humble opinion, because I think it's quite possible that Trent Burns, or for example, Jordan Butler as well, despite their very tall stature, could end up offensively. Maybe they are better suited for just being pick and pop type players. Obviously, Butler was not a good shooter this past season. That's all theoretical at this point. But to me, when it comes to Peyton Marshall, I know he's not the highest ranked player in this Ballyhooed incoming Missouri basketball class. But I think he's the most interesting and possibly the most important. And that's not a shot at Anor Boateng or, or anybody else in this class. I just think that Marshall is a guy that was a very common type prospect 20 or 30 years ago, a big back-to-the-basket guy with post moves and all that good stuff. But now, other than Zach Eady, how many guys, how many teams ran their offense through a post player? Other than Purdue and Zach Eady, who really did that? this past season. Well, I think because of that, because Marshall has that ability and a, and a unique touch and size and passing ability, it would seem at least at first glance in his highlights, if he can unleash all the potential that he has, if Ron Summers can help keep developing him. He's going to be somebody that other teams are not prepared to deal with. And the thing is, I think you see with DJ Burns for NC State, if you can pass from the post position, heck, you see with Nikola Jokic in the NBA as well. He's obviously the best player in the world right now. But specifically with college basketball, somebody like DJ Burns, who I think Peyton Marshall has even higher upside than Burns. But you've seen you can play with your back to the basket in modern college basketball as long as you can pass. That's the big thing because if you can pass from that spot – that opens everything else, and suddenly the double-team counter that most teams have, well, that goes completely by the wayside. And In fact, you don't want to double-team guys who can pass with their back to the basket. Speaking of Nikola Jokic, there it is. There's as good of examples as I can think of. So, to me, Marshall, a kid who has all the, the talent in the world, especially as a back-to-the-basket old-school center, He's already dropped a ton of good weight, by the way. He looks very much cut down in the last few months. That's a really good sign. Shows he's got some work ethic in him, too. Heck, if Ron Summers is the guy to, to bring out the best in Peyton Marshall, honestly, that might be worth a higher alone. I really think Peyton Marshall is that intriguing and interesting of a prospect for Dennis Gates and the Missouri Tigers moving forward. And coming up, Missouri's designated rival in football and basketball in the SEC, the Arkansas Razorbacks. Well, they're going to be looking for a new basketball coach next season, it would seem. And I want to address some other things that I've left in the notebook here, including why betting, despite my recent, ba my recent rant, is not necessarily bad. So let's clarify some stuff coming up here in just a little bit. But first, I want to tell you about Fire TV, because not only is the Fire TV the best way to consume movies, hit pause on your Fire TV sometime if you think, hey, wait, is that that guy from that thing? Well, now you can find out Fire TV, the best interface out there for movies. Well, not only that, it's your destination for sports as well. And Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a ridiculous supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. And not to mention great news, entertainment, 
gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Just check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. And passion, drive, and patience, the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With more than 122 million parts, for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge victories. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Well, Missouri's biggest SEC rival, the Arkansas Razorbacks, going to be looking for a new basketball coach. I tried to warn the Razorbacks back in late January when, well, quite honestly, the Razorbacks whipped the Tigers pretty good in basketball in Columbia, as many people did this past season. So when I went back and dunked on some Razorback fans who said that I was an idiot back in January, they were none too happy. Well, I can't blame them, to be honest. But even though Missouri didn't get a W this past season, I'm going to take any W I can get at this point. But Really, this is a this is probably good news for Missouri. A lot of Arkansas fans are hoping that they get Chris Beard from Ole Miss, perhaps Will Wade, the former LSU coach. Other than that, I don't see how this could really be an upgrade for Arkansas. Even even Will Wade, can he possibly be considered an upgrade over Eric Musselman based on what criteria? I have no idea. Chris Beard, hey, maybe there's an argument there. If they get Chris Beard, I could see that'd be a heck of a rebound for Arkansas. We'll see if that happens or not. Anybody other than him, though, I don't see how we can spin this as a positive for the Razorbacks. And speaking of spinning things as a positive, well, I'm not going to try to do that here, but I did notice a, a comment on my YouTube page when I did my, my John Tay Porter episode, kind of made a little bit of, of humorous, a, a bit of a humorous transition there into FanDuel uh, and that whole thing. And so one commenter said, oh, well, betting is bad. Here's the, here's the FanDuel read. That was their joke. And I'm like, Yes, thank you for explaining the joke that I was making, sir. Very, very helpful. But the point I was making, just in case it wasn't crystal clear, it's not that betting is bad, per se. Just like drinking a beer is not bad, per se. It's addiction and addictive behavior. That's what's bad. So my point is, we as human beings need to be self-reflective and have enough knowledge of what addiction is and what addictive behavior is to see it in ourselves. Because as I've said before, I can see that behavior in myself when it comes to alcohol on occasion. I don't really have it though when it comes to betting. I can recognize that. I'm able to just do 10, 20 bucks at a time. And by the way, take weeks or months off at a time without making a wager. But if that's not you, after you win one and you gotta you gotta double down and keep coming back for more just to get that chase that dragon, if you were if you will, well, that's the part that's bad. And by the way, you're literally never gonna be a winner if that is your mentality. If that's your relationship with betting, you're never gonna win. Forget about all the other not that it's not important, obviously the the side impacts that are negative against your life, even more important than this. But if you think you're going to win with that type of behavior, I promise you it's never, ever going to happen. So with all that being said, thanks for joining me as always here on Locked on Mizzou. I'll be back on Friday with another edition of Locked on Mizzou. I don't have any great teases for you right at the moment, I have to confess, but something's going to come up. 
Something will pop into the old brain. You know me. You know I love to talk about this stuff. So we'll be back tomorrow with another fresh episode of Locked on Mizzou.